Let's cover how to do unsupervised classification of a Landsat image in QGIS. Now, I have some Landsat imagery loaded in here. I'm not going to go over how to download that and load it into QGIS, but I'll link a video below that shows you how you can do that. What I want to do now is once that image is loaded in, we need to create this virtual, we don't, we don't need to create a virtual raster set, but it kind of helps for visualization. If you haven't done that before, I'll show you what you can do. Go to raster, miscellaneous, build virtual raster, and now you can select the inputs. You want to select Landsat bands one through seven and click OK. Then you want to come in and place each input file into a separate band. And when you select these, you want to make sure they're in order, band 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, otherwise, your virtual raster will be hard to remember which band is which band. Once you have that, those set, the input bands, and place each input file into a separate band, you can click Run. Before you do that, you might want to save this to a file and not a temporary file. It's a file on disk. I just have it as a temporary file. And this will create your virtual raster which is the raster here that I have. Now to show in true color, you can go to um, your layer styling panel, which you can access by going to view, panels, and turning on layer styling. And then go to multi-band color for your virtual raster, bands four, three, and two will give you true color. You can watch that video I linked below to see more about the other color combinations and false color composites that we can create. So once we have this, we want to go ahead and we're going to want to create uh, an unsupervised classification. Now there are a couple of ways to do this. Um, the first, you'll need to have QGIS installed with SAGA algorithms. And we can come down here and we can look for k-means. Uh, we want k-means clustering for rasters, which is... Um, our SAGA tool. So I can double click on it here. You can also find this in the um, processing toolbox. So I put the processing toolbox here. Uh, and I'll drag this bigger for you. And I want to search for k-means classification. k-means clustering for rasters, which is here. You'll notice it's in SAGA, imagery classification, k-means clustering for rasters. Now I get this uh, warning that SAGA version 7.8.2 is not officially supported. I've tested this and it works out um, just fine if we make a couple of slight adjustments. So the first thing I want to select the grids and here I'm just going to go ahead and select these seven bands. I'm going to select these data directly and not the virtual raster, the virtual raster I'm using only for display. I'll click OK here. The method I'm going to change to zero, which is the iterative minimum distance. I found problems with the first, with algorithm number one, the hill climbing. Um, and that may be because the version is not fully supported. Let's start out just by doing, um, let's do seven clusters to start out with. We'll do 10 maximum iterations. And we're going to leave the rest of these defaults the same. Um, I will save this to a file just so that you can see what the output looks like. So we'll save this to a file. And I guess you can see what the output looks like even if you just save it as a temporary image. But we'll save it as a file just in case we want to come back to it. So K means, and it's a seven class. So let's click save. And now um, I won't save the stats. I've run into some problems with the stats being calculated. We'll still get the output later, so it'll be just fine. And let's go ahead and click Run. Now this is going to take just a minute to run. Um, and while it does, I'll let you know that I cover this unsupervised classification and supervised classification and more methods for unsupervised classification using both Landsat and Sentinel images in my remote sensing with QGIS course, which I will link down below for you to take a look at. We go through several hours of video instruction and cover a lot of custom remote sensing courses or a lot of remote sensing techniques that you can use with free data in QGIS to classify land cover. So go ahead and take a look. I think you'll find it really useful.
Okay, so this is still running here. Um, I'm just gonna give it a pause while it finishes up, uh, and then we'll come back and take a look at the output results. Okay, so that is finished up. You'll notice we get a warning here that a temporary file was not generated properly. It's a shape file, our output's a raster, and our output looks like it's gonna be okay because I can see it appeared and was loaded in. So once that's done, we can close this window, and now we can go take a look at our classification file. You can see here it's displayed in grayscale. We may wanna change this to palleted unique values. And let's just go ahead once we have that and click classify and it will give a unique value to each of those different classes so that we can see what is going on here. Let's slide this over and we can toggle back and forth between our k-means classification and our raster, uh, our true color raster to see what is going on here. Let's zoom in on some areas to see what we have. Now, one thing we're gonna notice is that water appears to have been classified quite well. You'll notice we get different classifications over in some of these areas where roads appear to be um, kind of this purple color. And this cities build up buildings maybe also appear to be purple and maybe orange. So we can go in and we can change some of these things. So we'll notice that, let's see what we have here. Two, so two appears to be water, or at least close to water. So let's change this, I like the wheel, to uh, kind of a blue like this. Let's go back. Um, purple appears to be, you know, kind of road. So we can give it kind of a, maybe a gray, dark gray color, something like this. Okay, um, orange looks like it is some of these built up areas. And so let's go back and let's make this something um, representative of built up areas. They're often displayed as red. Maybe we'll go with the red color. Um, we can always come back and change it if we would like. Okay, and I'm gonna go change this just to be closer to black, something like that. Okay, and now let's see what we have for some of these other locations. We have this pink color, and it appears to be forested areas, maybe fields, I'm not sure. Yeah, the pink looks like it's maybe more fields oops, and meadows here. As you can see, if we look over here, we can see it looks like some forest, some taller trees, maybe some lower trees or some fields, some brush. And you can see that that comes out differently. And if we look over in this area, well, this will give us a good look. Yeah, those pink, the pink appears to be kind of agricultural fields. So let's make this maybe... Um, kind of a yellow color. Okay. And that means this kind of teal and other green are kind of our forested areas. And it's hard to see exactly how they differ here. But it looks like the green might be a little denser. Let's see if we can zoom out. Uh, at a broader landscape scale and see how those um, might be different. Okay, so here's an area where we can see some big swaths of those kind of next to each other. So that green appears to be Maybe more like, maybe some, there's some bare earth in there. You can see it right there. Yeah, so it's maybe lower vegetation, closer to bare earth. Um, and that green is more a forest. So let's make this more kind of a, you know, a darker green representative of forest. 
just like that. And let's make this one um, maybe more in this area over here. It might contain, you know, some soils or something in there. Something like this color here. Okay, and now, oh, this is also red, so we need to change this to something that we can tell what it is now. Let's go to this uh, bluish color. Let's go back. Let's turn that back on and see if we can figure out a rough representation of this last color. And it also looks like it's forested areas maybe not quite as densely forested. There's a lot of different forest classifications here, it looks like. Let's zoom out a little bit and see if we can find a, some larger areas of it. There's something right here. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, and that's kind of in that not quite bare earth. Let's just grab this. I'm going to see if I can make this kind of a We'll just make it a brownish color. It seems to be more bare earth, uh, that class number six. Class number seven, um, you know, it's somewhere in our green spectrum here, probably. We'll make it bright green, I guess. And let's see how this classification looks when we turn this all on. And there you can see that we have um, our land cover classification of this Landsat image. Now one important thing to note is that unsupervised classification doesn't necessarily represent certain land cover types. All we're doing is grouping pixels into classes based on the similarities across the bands. So it's possible we could have some similarities across those bands um, potentially between something like water and roads. We don't see that here but depending on the number of classes we have that could be the case. Now you notice we have a built up area right here and if we click this off you can see that is not built up but it is actually vegetation. And so we're seeing some um, discrepancies actually between built up areas and vegetation. You can also see here that it looks like it's classified as a road but it's not. And I can't tell what that is exactly from this picture but it's not a road but that's what it gets classified as. Um, and the same over here, we get some of these built up features, you know, bare earth, maybe it's classified as roads there. Uh, and so once again, remember this is not, doesn't necessarily correspond um, our classification to the features, um, but it can get us close in some instances. So we can turn that classification back on um, and you can just see how we're picking up uh, a decent, decent variation in these land cover types. If we were to do this uh, for a real project, you'd want to add some um, error evaluation, some uncertainty analysis um, in here so that you knew how accurate you were. And in the remote sensing class with QGIS, we do cover how to present a confusion matrix and assess the accuracy of your classifications. So if you're interested in that and want to learn more, go ahead and check that course out at geospatialschool.com. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this classification tutorial useful uh, and always come back for more.